Good morning. Welcome to Maryville and Fallowfield United Church. We hope you enjoy today's online service and find comfort as we worship together to explore our relationship with God. Both churches meet together, alternating every two weeks between the two church buildings. Please see our website for the church we are in, plus the announcements. For more information, including where to make donations, both churches can easily be found on the internet under Maryville Fallowfield Church. As a caring pastoral charge, we do our best to help many organizations in our city. Some of the ones we support are the Elizabeth Fry Society, Center 507, Ottawa Mission, and the Barhaven Food Cupboard. You can also find a list of these community services on our website. This week's announcements. Reverend Sandra Yule is currently on holidays until Sunday, March 4th inclusive. Please contact Judy Lancaster if you need assistance in any way. February 18 is Pancake Sunday at Fallowfield. Following the church service on February 18th at Fallowfield, we will be having our annual pancake, sausage, real maple syrup, and fellowship. We hope everyone from both churches can join us. Meditation group. This group meets on Thursdays at 10 a.m. at Maryville. And for book club, please note there is no meeting in February. However, we will be discussing two books in March. They are Homecoming by Kate Morton and Excellent Women, Excellent Women by Barbara Pym. The end reports for 2023 are now due, so please send them to Judy as soon as you can. Have a great week and God bless. In our worship, we are united by the love and grace of God. We are united by the compassion and teachings of Jesus. We are united by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Let us praise God with our words. Let us thank Jesus for our minds. Let us honor the Holy Spirit for our actions. Let us join our hearts together for our opening prayer. Oh God, we come to worship knowing that we are still in the season of Epiphany, and we come proclaiming the good news that Jesus was born and committed his life to that which is good and compassionate. We know that through him we are called to be transformed on our faith journey. And so we come ready to worship the light of the world, sent to guide us forward as we work to build his kingdom come on earth. We know at this moment you are with us, Holy One. You are with us, calling us to be a community grounded in love and commissioned to live out that love in your world. 
and help us, O oh God, to be compassionate people, open to your amazing creation, and ready to help those who need us most. You have called us today to listen to your voice that comes to our hearts through song, prayer, and scripture. And our worship calls us to journey into the unknown, trusting you through every aspect of our life. Help us to be courageous as we open our lives to new opportunities that lie ahead not only for us as individuals, but for the church as well. And these opportunities that lie ahead of us are new every day. Oh God, we still yearn to be together in person. And so we pray that your spirit will be with us as we continue with our virtual services. And we give you thanks for the deep commitment made by so many who are helping to keep our church alive during these difficult times. Be with us all as we do our best during these challenging times. And hear us now as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. My first reading this morning is from Psalms 36, verses 5 to 10. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your judgments are like the great deep. You save humans and animals alike, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house and give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. O oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you and your salvation to the upright of heart. Thank you. 
And the second reading this morning is from John chapter 2, verses 1 to 11, The Wedding at Cana. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them to the very brim. And he said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts always be aligned with your love, O God. Amen. In the Gospel of John, Jesus performs seven signs. And the author of John informs the reader that these signs were written so that the reader may come to know that Jesus is the Son of God. And the Gospel writer also explains that Jesus came so that we may see ourselves as sons and daughters of God and that we might have a good life and live it abundantly. Throughout all four Gospels, we see that Jesus has a mindset of abundance when it comes to life, to God's love, grace, and forgiveness. But no other story in our Gospels explains this better than the wedding at Cana. In the Gospel of John, the very first sign or miracle Jesus does is turning water into wine at the wedding. In the ancient world, weddings were abundant affairs and a time for great, great celebration. It was a time when people could try and forget the hard times that they were living under. You know, we often forget that there was more to Hebrew life than toil and drudgery. Now, weddings typically lasted for a period of five to seven days. And autumn was the best time for marriages. The harvest was in the vintage over, minds were free, and hearts were at rest. It was a season when the evenings were cool and beautiful, and it was enjoyable to sit up late at night. Now, usually the entire village gathered for a wedding, and a lot of wine would be served over the course of the week. And not only that, but wine was thought to be a symbol of prosperity, abundance, and good times. With these important details in mind, John gives us another side of Jesus. The Jesus who celebrates and enjoys a good party with his neighbors. Funny how we never think of Jesus as being a person who would be singing and dancing and having a great time at a wedding. But why wouldn't Jesus celebrate just like all the other people in his community? Now in our story, we know that Jesus has just been baptized and he is at the very beginning of his ministry. And so he goes to the wedding to be just another guest, just another one of the gang with his disciples. But when his mother Mary finds out that the wine has run out and recognizes the urgency of the situation, she wants Jesus to step in and do something about it. Interestingly enough, she wants him to perform a miracle, and she knows That would mean revealing who he really is to all the people who are at this major party. Even if Jesus didn't think the time was right or that his hour had yet come, he goes along with his mother's sense of compassion and he decides to take matter into his own hands. We learn a lot about Jesus in this story. We learn that Jesus had great compassion for the poor and the marginalized. You see, back then it would have been the servants and the hired help who were responsible for ensuring that every single detail of the wedding feast was just right. Everything had to be perfect. And nothing could be overlooked. And so who knows what would have happened to the servants and the hired help if Mary and Jesus had not stepped in to save the day. You see... These workers were not only disposable, they could lose their jobs, but they could have been physically punished as well. And so we have to ask, is Jesus' chief concern more for the servants than that of the host? I believe he knew that running out of wine would result in a far worse fate for the servants than the host. At this wedding, Jesus begins to show others that he himself has been sent to the poor and the marginalized. Now, I imagine he also wanted the host to save face, and he didn't want the wedding room for the bride and the bridegroom either. In this story, Jesus invites all people to live lives of abundance by pouring out endless grace upon everyone at the party. Right now, as we continue to deal with the coronavirus, it certainly is hard to find cause for celebration. And we might be wondering where we can find opportunities to celebrate God's abundant grace right now. 
I believe that in this story, the author is saying that celebration can happen in the midst of our everyday lives. Celebration can happen in the midst of our trials and our tribulations. And celebration can happen regardless of any situation. Jesus values celebration and so must we. And Jesus moves us toward an understanding of holy celebration that leads to God's grace and care for each and every one of us. In thanksgiving and gratitude, we can experience holy celebration in our relationships and in the simple pleasures found in our everyday lives. Through his actions at the wedding, Jesus invites us to live lives that are balanced, to celebrate and enjoy ourselves as well as doing the work that God calls us to do in building the kingdom come on earth. And yes, sometimes we are facing the brokenness of this world, but we are still called to celebrate and give thanks. Our story today is an invitation to live lives of abundant grace that is not limited to us as individuals, but is an invitation that has been extended to the whole world. And when we celebrate life and have gratitude for God's creation, it can help us to deal with any situation that comes our way, even the one we are dealing with now. I don't know about you, but I look forward to the day when we can finally be together again without fear of this virus, when we can finally have a party and celebrate together the goodness of God's grace in each other. May God bless us with celebration and good times. Amen.
let us pray. Creator God, we are so very grateful that your world is full of mystery and wonder. As we leave our worship this morning, we pray for the many different people of this world. Help us to always understand those differences that we have, to understand them more fully, and to also honor the good things that bind us together, despite our differences. Bless both our diversity and our unity. Loving God, source of truth and wisdom, teach us to always live in peace and harmony. Help us to have the courage to speak up whenever we see injustice towards others. Open our eyes to our own prejudices as well. And teach us to follow the way of Jesus, living in peace. Compassionate one, the world is filled with so many different challenges, and often we feel powerless to do anything about it. Today, our hearts ache for those living through circumstances that we can never imagine, especially war. And so we pray for the innocent victims of war. May we live out the teachings of Jesus among all people and help us to trust your guidance in all situations. And now, Holy One, we offer up to you in a moment of silence what is in our own hearts today. O oh God, we offer these prayers through Jesus, who is always our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As we leave our worship today, may the spirit of wisdom awaken in us understanding and compassion, insight and commitment as we try to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. And so go from this worship in the peace and the grace of Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm.